To the coronavirus now and a possible game changer in the fight against COVID. The former FDA commissioner says children as young as five years old could be eligible to get vaccinated by the end of October. The this news all comes as children are now back in school. Joining us now is Dr. Monica Gandhi, infectious disease expert at UCSF. Dr. Gandhi, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Do you have a timeline of when this all could happen and when kids will actually start getting the shots in their arms? You know, um, the Pfizer CEO on August 23rd said end of September they're going to submit the data mm -hmm. to the FDA. And then Dr. Fauci actually reiterated that this weekend. So putting those two together, I'm thinking that the FDA will be fast with their EUA review if everything looks good. So I would think mid-October. Now, there are a lot of parents that could be watching this thinking, wait, fast-tracked for a vaccine for my child? I don't know about that. What would you say to those parents? Two things. Um, one is that I think the FDA was actually really careful in terms of this vaccination because they wanted people to have trust and security in the vaccine. They asked Pfizer to increase the number of children enrolled in the 5 to 11 year old trial from 2200 about to 5000 to give more safety data. And the second is this is something Pfizer decided on its own. They lowered the dose um, from what they thought they were going to test in young children down to lower doses, which are it's 10 micrograms, which is a third of the dose we get as adults, which I think also will help parents feel better about safety. So those two things, I think, should give parents security. Well, as the Delta variant continues to surge nationwide, many hospitals are reporting increases of cases in pregnant women with COVID. What would you tell expectant mothers who are still hesitant about getting the vaccine? You know, there has now been study after study that this vaccine is really safe in pregnant women, but I think the, the strongest data is really from the CDC that really early on, and then they refresh that analysis, that pregnant women who have uh, received the vaccine have no concerns with certainly um, their own health or with the health subsequently of the baby born. So there is a lot of safety data now. Remember, we've actually had these vaccines not even since December, but in a way back since July, because that's when they started testing them in clinical trials. So we have quite a bit of data now that shows safety and pregnant women should get the vaccine. All right, let's talk about booster shots now. There's been a lot of talk about Pfizer and Moderna, but what about the folks who got the one dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine? They're wondering, wait a minute, do I still need to get that second shot? Yeah, you know, I, I do feel the Johnson & Johnson uh, recipients have not gotten good guidance, and I'm so sorry about that. And I absolutely really believe there's going to be guidance coming out on Friday. So what's happening on Wednesday this week is there's going to be a publicly available document that the FDA receives that has all the information about who they think, who essentially putting this together, the EUA and Pfizer, they're saying this is what we need boosters in. These are the populations we need boosters in, and the CDC is contributing to that. So the CDC has already looked at possibly older people, uh, possibly people with medical conditions, and also, importantly, Johnson & Johnson recipients. And the reason I say that is there was data released on Friday from CDC studies, and it looked like Johnson & Johnson was less protective than the other two. This is a data that we needed to get mm -hmm. before this decision. So Wednesday, we'll have the information. Friday, they will make recommendations. I am positive Johnson & Johnson is not going to be left out this time. You know, you've said before that you think that we're probably on, hopefully seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, especially now that children are going to be able to get vaccinated. Do you still feel that way about the projection of where this virus is going? And do you have any kind of prediction of where you see us in a year or so? You know, I think two things to answer to that. One is Dr. Ruther George Rutherford at uh, Grand Rounds last week in the Department of Medicine, which was on Thursday, um, estimated that we needed 84% immunity mm -hmm. to get through Delta, much higher than what we needed to get through Alpha. Mm -hmm. There was a population level study today that showed that we had much less than that. It was actually 66%, but that was before Delta. Adding in all the vaccinations and immunity we've gotten since Delta, it's about 78%. Do I think we're going to get there? Yes, I think we're going to get there. You can already see cases going down. Mm -hmm. Nation, 
as a whole, certainly in California, they've been going down for a while. And that really is immunity. I mean, I wouldn't want them to be going down because of natural immunity, but that's likely what happened in Missouri. But here in California, we had our vaccination rates up and cases are going down. What do I think it's going to look like a year from now? I think it's going to be endemic. I don't think it's going to be totally gone. I don't think that's realistic for a respiratory virus that this is transmissible. We will have defanged it. We will make it so that it doesn't hurt people by taking out that severe disease. Yeah. And then we may get low level infections and then some outbreaks in people who declined to be vaccinated. All right. Dr. Monica Gandhi from UCSF, thank you so much for joining us.